Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back with Kerbal Space Program. This is the Rods from the Gods mod, and this was actually a mod which uh, I had the ideas for, and I actually asked a bunch of people in the chat channel to to see if they could model the parts for it, and it was actually, and I'm going to get his name wrong, I think it's Sal Wager, um, yeah, or who ended up delivering it, although uh, Tavarius also did his own version uh, which was not delivered to me, I guess, in time for this. But the mo the part I needed, I asked people to model me uh, an 18 foot long um, tungsten uh, telephone pole, basically. You know, one foot wide, 18 feet long, eight tons of just solid, dense metal. And what do you do with something of that size? Well, you launch it into orbit, obviously. This station here is christened Zeus. And it carries six of them, because Zeus, the god from mythology, of course, would uh, was known for throwing thunderbolts from his uh, from his throne on Mount Olympus, throwing them down on the mortals below us. And that's what this Zeus is all about. It throws giant thunderbolts in the form of telephone poles. You see, we're orbiting around. We're getting to the right location. We're going to aim at Kerbal Space Center here. So, what we're going to do first is, is let the thing adjust itself into a retrograde position. And uh, I'm going to get into chase cam view because the rods only have braking thrusters. So, we're going to have to deploy them. Oh, actually, before we even deploy them, we're going to have to charge up the batteries on the probe bodies. They, I neglected to include batteries because, um, you know, military cost cutting, etc, etc. I mean, okay, this is... A legitimate idea which originally came around in the 1950s I believe and uh, it was actually Jerry Purnell who's credited with the original concept when he was working at Boeing back before he became a science fiction author he studied the concept of a weapon system that would essentially deliver giant telephone pole size projectiles from space and the idea and making them you know tungsten telephone poles is you're making them really long and thin so that they don't have a huge cross-section to the atmosphere. And that means that unlike space capsules, which are short and flat and blunt, these things are long and thin and, you know, they have very little air resistance. So they can go down and hit the ground at, you know, Mach 10 easily. Space capsules you would like to slow down a little more because parachutes don't work at that speed. So, yeah, I've... I've uh, Used the, I, I basically used the RCS thrusters on the main spacecraft to move it away. This is now free floating. I'm enabling the engines. We're just going to hold the retrograde position and fire up the engines. Everything falls away. Now, of course, you'll notice that the engines are mounted backwards. Um, this is not a conventional missile. Conventional missiles are leaving the ground trying to go upwards. These, on the other hand, are trying to slow down so that they return to the planet using the planet's gravity to accelerate their descent. We only need a small amount of uh, thrust to actually slow us down to re-enter the atmosphere, although it helps to go steeper into the atmosphere so that we spend less time lower down and hit the ground going faster. This is a this was trial version and uh, I, I think I underdid the amount of thrust. Anyway, next thing we want to do is point the point the thing downwards so that when the planet comes around it's pointing the right way and then ditch the computer and thrust section we don't want to have that attached because that actually has a higher thr higher uh, wind resistance compared to the rest you see i had to take this part and adjust its drag to be one percent of what normal parts are and that will enable it to fall down through the atmosphere and hit the ground going at you know Mach 10. Well, ma not Mach 10, because you can't go Mach 10 in Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> Mach 10 is escape velocity. But the whole point is that we're going to hit going a lot faster than your typical terminal velocity for any object. And so there we go. We're just skimming across the planet, flying across the deserts, and we are about to hit the atmosphere. Now we're going to go into regular um, physical time warp, and it's going to take us a while to get there. So let's talk a little more about the real Project Thor. Now, uh, well, a, an 8-ton object moving at Mach 10 has roughly the same energy as about 12 tons of TNT. Now, that puts it on par with a, a large weapon yield, right? It's not nuclear by any measure. Um, 
it's, you know, something that you can get from a cruise missile, perhaps. And so that's one of the main reasons why the system doesn't actually exist, because there are many more conventional weapons that can deliver this capability. It's not illegal to actually put weapons in space. It is illegal to put nuclear weapons in space, but uh, this is not nuclear by any means. It's simply using pure, old, good-fashioned kinetic energy. So um, it does, however, have a few qualities that make it uh, interesting. Well, for, first of all, uh, because of the way the energy is delivered, it is an exceptionally good ground penetrator. If you were actually trying to knock a hole in the ground to attack a subsurface bunker, this would be an exceptionally good choice because, you know, the instead of um, regular, regular surface penetrators are using shape charge to generate this, whereas this has already condensed all that velocity into a single solid object that will not turn away from its goal. And for that reason, it's also uh, exceptionally hard to shoot down using a conventional anti-ballistic missile systems. Well, anti-ballistic missile systems are designed to cause, you know, early detonation. They're dealing with things that are much more fragile. This is a solid block of metal. You hit it with a hammer, it rings and it barely notices. So yeah, you know, it has some advantages, but they're very small advantages. On the other hand, because it is traveling so fast, it's going to generate, you know, big re-entry plasma sheaths. And that basically means that once it enters the atmosphere, any sensor systems cannot see where it's going, so it can't change course. Uh, the computer sitting at the back could, in theory, you know, adjust fins and things like that, perhaps to get some course corrections. But you know, it's hard to even get a radio signal in there from a third, uh, from like an external command post. So it would essentially be only useful against static targets. Okay, so here we're coming down. We're, we're only going to do like one kilometer per second, I guess. We're going to even lose that. The trajectory is way too shallow, I think. 900, 800. This is, of course, still setting all sorts of interesting speed records for gliders in the atmosphere, right? 700 meters per second and straight in under the ocean. I think the crash tolerance of this is set to something like 999, so... <laughs> It actually they actually embed themselves rather nicely into the ocean. Anyway, obviously that was a miss by about forty kilometers. So uh, I go back and adjust the orbit a bit a little, come in a bit higher actually, so that the descent is much steeper and we come in much faster. And this is us. We're aiming for the um, the aircraft that is on the runway. It's a rather spectacular aircraft, which uh, you might see more often in the future. It comes from another mod which uh, does a better job on the aerodynamics. And uh, I'm sure you can all guess what that one is. But here we are t coming in at almost two kilometers per second. Now, uh, yeah, that is only Mach four or five at this time. It's rather slow compared to the real thing. But there we go, right on course, right for the end of the runway and boom. Well, um, that was less spectacular than I thought because what happens, I think, is that the floating coordinate system Re adjusts the coordinates or something at the last minute because it's coming in so fast and the object, the spacecraft or the plane, collides into the surface instead. So um, that would be a nice bug to fix, I guess. Well, let's uh, try hitting something else that won't move. Uh, let's try aiming for... Well, can you guess which target I'm aiming for now? Again, coming in very steep. Let's watch the velocity this time. You see we're picking up speed at this time, we're still falling down. And uh, now the atmosphere is starting to have an effect, And but we're still going faster. And now they are 22.45 is what we were going when we hit about 20 kilometers. Now we are descending obviously at some remarkable speed with a 20 degree slope. I think that must be almost like 700 meters per second vertical we're going down. There is Kerbal Space Center there. You can see the range ticking off when we compare to the, the vehicle there. And we're going to go straight down the middle into the vehicle assembly building. <laughs> Mission successful. But it is still standing, even if it does have a giant telephone pole-sized hole through it. Anyway, that's enough for me. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.